silent mode in the sense you uh, no video is going to be there for anyone else except bharat and me as well as the uh, audio mode will be in mute so that the communication is adequate everybody is able to hear whatever we both are going to interact you are most welcome to ask any questions you have on the chat box we'll have a look at the chat box after 45 minutes which is 8:45 and for last 15 minutes we'll have questions based on whatever chat are there subsequently also in case there are any questions i would request uh, you to please uh, uh, approach us and we'll most uh, you are most welcome to share whatever questions you have so till that time i'll request can please please keep the video in the switch off mode as well as the audio also in the silent mode so this as brief introduction welcome bharat hi sir and then good evening so good evening everyone so uh, the first question basic question which is there that why somebody needs to climb a mountain i mean it's very difficult for someone who is not into mountaineering for running i can say okay somebody runs because they get adrenaline rush you get instant deliverables the moment you start running and you finish it you get instant results but how about mountaineering uh sir um the straight answer for this it's like you know it's it depends on from person to person it varies that is the first point i can tell you okay so uh and uh when coming to mountaineering right so it improves yeah. a lot of mental strength okay okay so, so that is what that is the key point what i observed okay that is fine but then how do you keep motivating yourself you know running is fine you run for some time you're not feeling well you can stop but in mountaineering once you are midway in a expedition you cannot fall back i mean there are a lot of things which are playing in your mind how do you motivate yes, in those sir. situations then see that is what that is what i'm telling you that is what the where uh, this mental strength i mean uh, it should be very very i mean very strong okay uh, one thing sir uh, yeah as you said like you know for running like you you can stop uh, like you can you can have some rest and you can go even even in mountaineering we can stop but not like uh, uh, running we can we can't stop much time okay if there is a target we have to reach the target okay so uh, there is a time limit okay so see if if uh, at the starting stages that is fine okay if you cross okay. i mean 7000 meters and all okay you will be on the oxygen cylinder okay you don't have much right. time okay you have to like you know um, even oxygen uh, it will get over if you if you delay exactly. so like yeah that is what you have to prepare well mentally so like anyway you have to like you know finally you have to reach the target yeah mentally it's a good thing so tell me uh, there are a lot of people who are there in the talk today and they are those who are going to listen to us the only thing they have in mind first of all they want to know is that how should one prepare you know somebody who is a novice or somebody who wants to pick up mountaineering or a trekking how should they go step by step to reach mount everest you know everybody dreams that okay that is the highest point on earth i should be seeing the world from the top those kind of things so some everybody has own level of motivation and reason to climb But then, uh, what should be the steps they should follow to reach the top of the world? Right, sir. See, uh, actually, uh, first here, okay. Uh, I'll explain you. I mean, uh, how yeah. to reach Mount Everest. What are the, I mean, uh, steps we have to take Correct. to reach the to reach the top? Okay. Before that, you know, uh, there are some mistakes which have done by me, and also many people will do the mistakes. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Sure. So generally, yeah, generally, once like you know, any 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 person who thinks of mountaineering, who who enters into a professional mountaineering. first thing they i mean one thing comes into mind is like mount everest right straight straight thing so we'll target mount everest okay uh, when i started my journey okay uh, first I'll, i'll explain my mistake what all mistakes i have done here correct okay. yeah so that people don't make that mistake yes 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 so uh, like generally if i say this like many people will laugh uh, okay even i'll get laugh uh, i mean uh, uh, no, that's what fine. mistake i did yeah see uh, my first peak was mount everest i i never climbed any mountain before that first peak you started in mount everest so there is a voice disturbance it's clear my what, voice what is clear? yeah yeah i can hear you tell okay, okay right bhavna right. can you switch off the video please yes of course thank everyone. you everyone uh, bhavna just yeah bharat we can hear we can keep going we keep keep saying okay so uh, like my first peak, peak was mount everest okay so when i when okay. i mean when i uh, okay at the final day like i have submitted the mount everest that's fine but i never enjoyed the journey like i'm very tired and all these things because like i i never came by step by step 
okay at that i mean during okay. those time like i i mean i'm not much uh, uh, into any club kind of thing like i'm not much, i i didn't went i didn't made many interactions with many people who are into mountaineering no i don't have proper guidance at all so i chose okay. mountaineering that that's only in my mind like i went and i climbed okay i mean with lot of struggle like uh, by tiring a lot somehow i reached it but i never enjoyed the journey so that is what i want to say like you have to go by step by step even i did only basic course that is discontinued i am a discontinued student so <laughs> the journey started like that so it, we have to go like step by step so we have to we have to do a course like course is not mandatory but we have to do a course okay. so course will be for 30 days okay so it okay. is like uh, see uh, living home uh, being 30 days somewhere like you know uh, every, every i mean uh, there will be having everything like uh, in little i mean uh, you don't have luxury okay if you send if if you spend like 30 days like uh, out of your home like you know uh, somewhere like around like 16000 feet you are training somewhere there uh, sleeping in the bunkers in the tents having uh, having food not not the luxurious food like not the home food uh, right. something away away from home so it will it will, it will all make you like you know uh, it, it will give a lot of strength to you so this is what right. uh, you have to come, i mean when you are planning for 8000 is like everest you have to go uh, you have to go through like uh, uh, basic course after that like advanced course you have to do so after that step on step uh, like in advanced course at least you'll reach like 5500 meters after that at okay. least, i mean before going to the everest you have to compulsory at least you have to reach 6500 7000 meter is the best there are many peaks in india which are okay. which are into 7000 meter but at least you have to reach 6500 meters because i'll tell you one thing here sir if okay. we if if we do like any 7000 generally 7000 uh, meter peaks we do without oxygen cylinders okay no need of oxygen okay right so doing a 7000 meter without oxygen and after that like uh, peaks like everest or something i mean uh, any 8000 meters like after that keep i mean uh, doing with uh, oxygen after 7000 meters like, generally we use oxygen in the like uh, 8000 meters so it, right. it 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 gives it gives almost the same result okay if you if you if you are yeah. climbing a, a mountain a 7000 meter like without oxygen and a 8000 meter with with oxygen so if you are climbing a 7000 meter like you'll be very confident that you can make a 8000 with oxygen very easily okay mate nice. so that was a good analogy because uh, in our case we being from the army team we went step by step really i mean the ideal thing which should be there so your difference is totally from the ground level you have learned the harder way that going on top of the everest and then realizing that you should have trained much better so it's a completely different perspective and i'm sure after you have done the everest you must have learned so many things and guided so many people to yes. follow the right path that's a yeah. good thing i would say so tell me and this, I, the, it's yeah sir sir again like uh, there is a disturbance uh, i'll request once again everybody to please keep it on mute as well as keep the video on Uh, I mean, keep the video off, please. All those who are joining late, thank you. Yeah, brother. Yeah. So tell me this in ah, uh, uh, who is this? Okay, brother. So tell me this. In our case, we found uh, it was very, very challenging. Though we had done a seven thousand meter peak also before reaching to the top of the Everest. Okay. in your case must have been i mean i can't imagine what you must have gone through if you directly went to the everest so it's beyond imagination no doubt <laughs> but tell me this what are the three things i mean they, i'm sure there are many many things which would be important to climb on top of the world but then what are the three most important aspects you would like to highlight for everybody to consume that they should keep in mind so as to reach on top i mean in a much better manner rather than struggling to be on top of the everest yeah uh there are uh, many key points to keep in mind sir like okay i'll i'll okay. get i mean i'll get with the three major points okay uh one point like i'll i'll be stressing like every time i'll be stressing to many people okay which is like mental strength okay hello yeah yeah brother yeah please go ahead can hear you yes 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 so mental strength is a key point okay the key okay. key point i i i mean i mean according to my you know um, i mean uh, i'm into like mountaineering from many years like what i observed okay uh, yeah but i can hear you yeah i don't know like you know, there is a i mean in okay. between there is a cut 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 okay okay okay, okay. so one is mental strength 
okay okay the other is like positive attitude so positive attitude like i'll give an example okay what what exactly sure. positive attitude is okay see uh, i mean mainly for uh, peaks like 8000 meters okay i mean i will be seeing many people like you know um, they only think like uh, reaching to the summit it's done it's not like reaching to the summit it's coming back to the base camp again yeah okay right. <laughs> so uh, hello we can hear you brother go ahead yes yeah so it's not like uh, reaching to the summit it's coming back to the base camp so when I, when i say like positive attitude uh, i mean if i mean every year we we see lot of cases like you know after summit like people will die okay right many many people like you know uh, i mean while coming down like you know i mean exhaustion is the main problem for them okay so that is what i'm telling i mean that is what i tell to many people it's not like you know if you are like if you, if you're not i mean uh, if, even when you are close close to the summit uh, so if you're not uh, feeling well you know you are exact, exhausted and all like uh, you know just come back come back to the base camp okay mount I mean you can come i mean you can come next year like you can plan any you can plan some other day okay just think like right. it's not your day just uh, that positive attitude like it's it's very important in the mountain yeah i mean that's a very very important point you said because we see lot of people who are so adamant to reach the top not realizing that you know at the end of the day it's life which you are taking at risk and it's not just your life yes. it's the family so, yes, many yes, are so many people are so many people dependent upon yes even this right. year like 2019 we have we have seen some cases like this they have submitted yeah, and while while coming like i mean due to exhaustion i mean lot of exhaustion like uh, they lost their lives true too like, so you mean to say you should never let your guard down till the time you are back at the base camp you know yes i i think that's like, why they say it's not a one way journey you got to go to the top and make sure you are back at the base camp as well yes so true so but yeah. tell me one uh, yeah please you think yeah the third point is like you know uh, planning there should be a proper planning okay i mean whenever like a person takes an 8000 meter so it's not like uh, uh, i mean two months or three months back like you thought of like uh, climbing and just go on to the 8000 right? so it's not like that yeah, there should yeah. be a proper planning for that planning is very important for it i mean any 8000 there should be a proper plan. at least a year plan should be there Yeah, yeah. Uh, I can very well say to that because we also did complete one year was yes. exhaustive training. Then only we could do that. So three points. I'll just repeat the three points which yeah. Bharat has said important for any expedition, uh, be it a six thousand, seven thousand, eight thousand. But the level of uh, the intensity of these things increases as well as you go higher. So first is uh, mental yeah, fitness. Right. So if you're mentally very very strong, it's going to help it's physically. Uh, I'm sure point. even if you're yeah mental is most important second is the positive attitude and third is a good planning so if you have planned it well then i'm sure you're going to do better compared to if you're not planning there's no point suffering after that so but tell me one incident wherein you had the, i mean most challenging time in any of these expeditions they've done so many of them so what was the most challenging incident which you want to share with our friends so that they get to learn from it about the life in expedition yeah uh Yes, sir. I mean, uh, I, can, I mean, I'll explain you like uh, uh, two incidents over here. Okay, I, sure. I want to like uh, yeah, yeah, two see. incidents, like you know, uh, I, because like I, when I say like two incidents, like I want to, I mean, I, uh, I want to share a successful journey and a failure journey. Okay. Yeah. So see, I'll, I'll first, I'll, uh, I'll come with this like 2015 my Everest expedition. Okay. Okay. So 2015, uh, like you know, I mean, you, I mean, everyone will be uh, heard of this like Nepal earthquake. Uh, due to that like uh, all the all the expeditions are called off in between so like uh, even uh, mm, the earthquake was around like uh, april 25th yeah i still remember the date april 25th we reached we are on the way from advance base camp i mean i climbed from north side uh, from china right. north col yeah from advance base camp we are getting ready for this uh, going to north col which is at like uh, 7000 meters so advance base camp is like 6400 meters so we reach 6400 okay. april 25th is the date like we uh, we faced this uh, tremendous earthquake uh, we observed a lot i mean it was like all the uh, tents and mountains i mean uh, there's a big shake uh, so we all okay. came out like uh, everyone are like coming out like they are shouting they are praying we i mean i didn't understand like what exactly happened <laughs> what exactly it's happening 
okay absolutely so immediately yeah immediately we i mean all the team members like we just went to base camp yeah, or i mean we 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 have a call from the base camp like just come back to the base camp immediately so it's not going to be the safe uh, because like again the earthquake happens i mean uh, it will be a serious thing at that height at that height uh, so we are back to the base camp and now i'll tell you one thing sir here this was happened in 2015 okay yeah this incident so uh, i planned everest in 2012 okay from 2012 okay. i yeah, i struggled a lot you know i mean raising funds and everything 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 it took me 3 years to raise funds and uh, climb in 2015 finally it took it took, i mean i, I mean uh, uh, during that time like there are very few people okay who climb there it's i mean even uh, when i when i'm going to sponsors it's they, they don't know much about this field and all so it took me 3 right. years completely so i came back uh, like we are back you know after after coming to my place like i you know i was disturbed a lot i mean i mean it's it's a, i struggled a lot for 3 years like you no know, uh, keeping money aside and, i mean 25 lakhs it's it's a, it's a one shot gone so yeah. that is what i'm telling you it's 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 again a, uh, i mean uh, that is what you know from that stage i mean then i thought uh, Uh, any 8000er even see then i thought like my journey was into completely into 8000ers i want to complete all the 8000ers right. then yeah. uh, it was the thing see for the first expedition in my life the everest expedition it was called up due to the earthquake all my all the money was gone okay then i thought like even in future when i when i'm coming to uh, 8000ers it's not like a one shot okay right. i mean we can say that you know uh, when even this time i have to go to kanchenjunga it is called up due to coronavirus thing okay correct yeah so so every time we have to be you know we have to be ready you know mentally we have to be like prepared it, it, it whatever the expedition whatever the 8000 that we have to be ready it's not the single shot Absolutely. it can be it can be stopped anyway due to the weather conditions avalanches like any it can be stopped anyway yeah so that right. is what uh, and so from so that then the then, mental condition becomes all the more important then Yes, 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 yes. And due to that incident, I mean, though it took lot of years. Okay, 2012, I thought like 2015, it was happen, and 2017, I climbed. Uh, my Mount Everest journey was almost like five, six years. You know, this yeah, made right. me like you know very strong. Correct. So now I'm ready to climb all the 8000s. Like you know, whatever the situation, how many times <laughs> it might be. Okay. Cancelled. I'm ready. I'm ready for this. Yeah, that's right. So I mean, the I mean, situations I don't, I don't like this. Yeah, situations like this really make you strong. Yes, 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 yes. So that is what happened with this uh, thing. And again, recently, uh, when as a satisfied mountaineer, uh, recently, like okay. uh, in 2019, so when you, when your team was climbing Everest, uh, so yeah. our team we did uh, Lhotse. Lhotse, I enjoy, I enjoyed it a lot. See, uh, Lhotse is like it's it's a. Uh, I heard like before going to Lhotse, I heard like it's a technical, it's a, it's a highly technical fee. What I heard, okay. like, you know, when I went there, like, you know, when we are going to Everest, most of the time. with our crampon uh, crampon is a spike okay what yeah. uh, we wear it to the boots so uh, even when you, i mean even your journey when you are going to like uh, um, everest most of the time you walk on the snow snow or glacier and for right. the problem for lot say is like most of the time we walk on the rock okay so wearing a crampon and walk with that loads walking walking on a rock it's like horrible thing so after, <laughs> after yeah. Re- uh, yeah yeah after reaching to the summit uh, i mean uh, uh, after reaching summit and back to the base camp i mean after this success like uh, then uh, i realized like you know i was ve- i mean very satisfied like uh, okay this is what mountaineering is so okay. that lotse expedition it made me that way no no i am sure i can relate because once you were back at the camp and i spoke to you that was the time you were saying that lotse was a different experience because of the rocks you faced over there Yeah, yes, right. Yes, yes, yes. So coming on to yes. uh, the next question, the planning which you emphasize that planning should be there. So what aspects of planning would you say as far as the uh, physical aspects are concerned, and for what how do you plan mentally? So these two aspects are the most important. You said physical as well yes. as mental. How do you plan it uh, as far as you are concerned personally? How did you uh, train for that? Yeah, personally, uh, so again, it it depends on from person to person. Okay, so right. what, uh, how much physical strength they have to be like? What is what about the mental strength and all? And for me, in my experience, like I can tell you, sir, like my all the my all success successful summits are like with sixty five percent, I'm I'm in mental strength only. Okay, and thirty five percent is my physical. All 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 are done like all are successfully. May summits are like you know I'm 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 mentally strong. Sixty five percent I'm mentally strong. Okay. Right. 
correct so 35 percent of my physical use i mean i used it there okay and and again here i'm when i say person to person when i'm climbing with suresh suresh was the person he was just 19 year, uh, 18 years when i um, mean we are climbing together okay, okay he was he climbed with me everest lot say manasto and all now he is 20 years like and and coming to his part he is physically he is like you know 80% physically and 20% <laughs> mentally, because of the yeah. age factor okay right. so he is he is in 20s i am in 30s okay that is what we we learn we have seen lot of things like you know in mountaineering we i mean that is what uh, i mean now all the birding uh, birding uh, early birding mountaineers like uh, who are in 80 18 years 19 20 21 22 like you know they are like more of physical thing when okay. you know uh, yeah uh, what i observed from i mean when i'm tra- i mean traveling closely with suresh what i observed is like if something happens i mean more than a physical thing i mean uh, where we have to use more mental uh, uh, mental strength uh, you know uh, he is not the right person to take up the challenge okay so that is what i observed like you know uh, you know i have to be with them like you know i have to motivate him like i have to take him it was like that okay so at i mean whatever the mountain at certain stages like when we lose our i mean i mean we lose our physical strength whatever i mean mainly mainly at 8000 this like we will we'll exhaust a lot that is where like our mental strength has to work correct yeah so, so i mean me i prefer it, like yeah. A, yeah yeah i'm telling yeah so and for mental strength you see uh, i i told you sir like you know mental strength will comes from it most of the time i mean, I mean yeah for birding mountaineers like who want to develop their mental strength that is what i'm telling you yeah. like you know the, these courses basic course advanced course like whatever the courses are there like you know when we are spending right. lot of time like you no know, 30 days around I mean, away from the home like you know uh, yeah somewhere uh, i mean uh, we never went uh, to that place like spending lot of time there which that will make that will create lot of mental strength Correct. Okay. And again, like there are a few things like, you know, uh, e- even uh, um, I did a, uh, in my experience, I did a course in Ladakh. It's not a course. Uh, okay. I went to Ladakh. Sir. I, in Ladakh, like um, I spend around like, with my own tent and all, like I spend a lot of time there, like, you know, uh, 14, 15 days alone. Okay. Okay. I mean, when, when I'm preparing for this 8,000 days and all. Okay. These, these, I mean, these things made me strong mentally. Okay, how to stay alone, okay. like, you know, how to, I mean, generally my part is like, I'll, I mean, I'll, I'll, I mean, every time I'll have a book, a book and a pencil with me, I'll be writing stories, a lot of time I'll, I'll be spending like in that way. Okay. okay. I'm a movie lover. I'll be like watching <laughs> movies. Right. So in base camp, in, in even base camp, we'll, we'll be having a lot of uh, power, not a, not a problem. Right. So that is how I spend my time. So, uh, so what you said was that uh, you have to divert your attention not from the mountain but to other uh, interests which you have. You know, yes, so that's yes, yes. Uh, important. Yes, that is very important. <laughs> okay, right. So next you tell me, you know, for Everest or for any 8000, the challenges are the kind of food which you get at, uh, I mean, at the ground level or in, let's say, Delhi, Hyderabad, those kind of food you don't get. What kind of, uh, so how do you manage eating food? That's generally the question with most of the people. Uh, what kind of food you eat? What kind of gear you wear? I mean, those aspects if you can highlight. Okay, okay. So generally food, coming to the food part, obviously, no, like, uh, no home food. I mean, uh, right. nothing. <laughs> so, yeah. Uh, in base camp, so generally, like all the 8,000 is, all related to like Chinese and uh, Nepal. We have Nepali cooks and all at the base camp. So till base okay. camp, there is no problem. There is no problem at all. Like uh, at least, okay. I mean, uh, Nepali food is like somewhere related to North Indian food. We can't say South India. Okay. At least, at least okay. North Indian food. So base camp is fine. So at least base camp and advanced base camp. Like uh, I mean, there will be a cook from Nepal. Like he'll be cooking for ourselves. Like, till six thousand four hundred meters or like six thousand meters. Okay. So after that, so once again, there is a difference. Oh, sound. Hello, sir. Yeah, brother. Okay, there is a lot of questions. Okay. So, uh, after crossing the advanced base camp, mainly. Okay. Okay. Uh, I mean, uh, the food what we take on the mountains is like uh, food which is like more of uh, you know more of protein 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 is food like you know it's, it's a packet kind of food okay. uh, like o- oatmeal uh, 
all these things like we just uh, you know uh, we just boil the water there and we'll just pour in the we just um, cut the packet we'll just pour in the packet we'll shake and we'll eat so and uh, coming to my personal uh, things i i mean yeah. um uh, there is like, uh, yeah there is like uh, mm, uh, even uh, i am a non veg lover but after i mean i observed in mountains like after 6500 meters whenever i eat non veg like it is not uh, no it i mean it is not properly digesting for me it 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 is creating a lot of problem for, problems for me okay okay so after 6500 i am completely changing it to veg Oh, nice. I'm not taking. Any, I'm taking. I'm not. Taking, I mean, it, it's again. I mean, from person to person, depends on their like digestive system. It is again dif- differentiate. Okay. So even Sorry. this packet food, which is like more of protein, protein food and all, like uh, I tried. Uh, I mean, for me, I mean personally, I'm, 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 I'm experience. I experienced. Okay. So what I did is like, uh, you know, I mean, uh, after for even for this load, say what I did is like, uh, I, I took like, you know, uh, packet food, a normal. I, I don't say it's a protein food. I have not a nor- normal. Okay. Food. Okay. I took it from Hyderabad. Okay. So I, okay. I made it there at the higher camps. Okay. And final camp, and final camp, I didn't took a pro. I mean, um, this food. Uh, so one second. There is a lot of sound. Yeah, there's some disturbance. So everybody is on mute. I don't see anyone else on. Uh, okay, yeah, okay. but I think it's Romil, fine. Romil, just you have to un you you have to mute everybody and just unmute Bharat and yourself because there are people who are. Uh, okay, I'll do that. Yeah, yeah. You mute everybody and unmute. Okay. Sure. Yeah. yeah. everybody's on mute now it is what's up this yeah but now i think it's clear oh yes, yes. thank you yeah. so yeah, yeah. yeah so after uh, uh, after this uh, i mean at the hair camps what i did is like you know i mean i i just took uh, a normal packet food from here okay which is which, okay. which can be a, a maggi like you know uh, a noodles like um, it won't give you any energy at least no it will fill your stomach okay so right. then what i did is like i took lot of uh, this uh, dry fruits okay okay uh, uh, dry fruits like i just used to keep in my pocket okay even even with dry fruits on, on the journey i used like you know uh, mm, these things are like uh, toffee chocolates like mango like okay. orange okay right right yeah i mean more of sugar sugar stuff yeah sugar sugar like sugar gives lot yeah. of i mean in, instant it will create instant energy at least sugar will keep our mind with ourselves okay right that's true uh, so like yeah so i mean dry fruits and all i had to fill my pockets like you know uh, with that like i had to start my journey so that that's my personal experience and again it, it will be different from person to person like you know there have been there yeah, are many sure. people who who took like lot of protein food and all so i, mean, I yeah. for me like it, it, it there, there's a lot of digestion problem with that so i took my own yeah. um, deci- i mean uh, my own decisions like i am mean, dry food so and, uh, what happens uh, we have also realized right so what we have also realized with our team was that as you go higher your body focuses most of the blood to the most vital organs so digestion as it is going to suffer with everyone else so that's why you avoid taking foods which are uh, difficult yes. to digest in your gut so that's a mm-hmm. extremely important point other thing is that dry fruits obviously are good because you can easily carry it along and then you can consume yes. it Uh, whatever you want and i remember one of the army guys who is everest we are we are asking for a solution what should we be having so he said you should, whatever you you can eat that's important mm-hmm. because your favorite foods only you should carry because at those altitudes you don't feel like eating anything you don't feel hungry yes. at all so that's why it's important like in our case we carry alu bhujia bigan ye bhujia those kind of things so that change of pace is there when you get to eat whatever you want to yes. tell me something about the gear now bharat what kind of yeah. gears do you wear once you doing a 8000 and how is it different from a 6000 meter gear which somebody wears yes shoes those kind of thing yes 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 yeah coming to like you know when we take about like 6000 meters like comparing 6000 meters like with 8000 meters the gear is completely different uh, okay when coming to okay. thick, thickness level uh, all these things so for 8000 is like when uh, i'll just compare like you know uh, what gear i took in 2015 and now kanchenjunga like i have changed all my gear okay i'll just okay. set an, i mean tell you an example for example there's a shoe sure. okay the shoe like two i mean uh, two shoe, i mean uh, the pair of shoe like uh, which was weighing for for uh, i mean 2015 when i bought my own pair they were weighing around like uh, 3.75 kg 
okay which is heavy okay okay yeah, yeah. 3.75 to 4 okay so again keeping a cramp on to that like it will it will come to 5 5 plus sir. okay so and now i bought a gear i mean i just have to collect in uh, kathmandu and there is now, now like you know every year like you know there is uh, there is more advancement in the gear right and and now the shoe which i i mean i purchased uh, uh, it's a last sportiva it is a half of the weight now it, they they became very light mm-hmm. i mean in november into the november they like you know they tried uh, and they introduced a new model okay, okay. so every year, every i mean it is it is half a weight okay uh, so so every year like you know there is a lot of advancement in the gear okay correct so n- even for like uh, uh, even for uh, i mean uh, for this like uh, mm, gear what we carry from base camp to the top you know so uh, it's completely different till 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 advanced base camp like you know 6600 meters we use like you know normally three layers is enough okay yeah so the main summit suit uh, i mean uh, from from at least like third camp we use the summit suit okay and there are like lot of uh, brands for the summit suit summit suit like when you are wearing a summit suit like you know uh, at least we have to wear at least a three layer inside Okay. Okay. I mean, uh, I mean, a thermal to the to I mean to the body. After that, uh, a thermal like you know, after thermal like a t-shirt, and after that fleece, and after that fleece, like we'll go with the uh, I mean down suit. Down suit is the main layer which we I mean take it to the summit, uh, which we wear for the summit. Right. Uh. So uh, these things like uh, I mean, there are very good I mean lightweight, very good brands like uh, uh, Adventure, like I mean Mountain Hardware, like North Face. I mean, there is. A, I mean, and now nowadays, like uh, gear and all, like there, lot of advancement came. So, like, you know, every, every everything became very light, very light. Okay. So, there is nothing to so worry about. Tell me, yeah. How how do we get uh, these gear? Are these available in India, or do we need to import all these? No, no, sir. Like, see, generally, like you know, uh, when we are climbing eight thousand, us we'll we'll go through Kathmandu only. In Kathmandu, there are like okay. showrooms. Like, uh, I mean, uh, Northway showroom is there, which was owned by okay. the company. okay and like mountain hardware there are com- there are lot of companies in uh, kathmandu so generally we purchase there okay. and 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 there is one thing all these uh, for example whatever company you take glass sport you are millet so whatever it is like these are like, european companies so right. it is it is like uh, see for example we are indians okay uh, i mean i told you like i purchase a new gear for uh, uh, kanchenjunga for example shoe when i'm buying a shoe a glass sport you are is made of italy when i'm buying this shoe from italy it is more costly than when i'm buying this shoe in kathmandu okay the same shoe it is from italy only it is last sportiva the same shoe the same shoe because right, like, right. you know again again like transportation like it's not like I mean, the taxes i mean when italy indian taxes right. are more when compared to nepal so i'm getting more cheaper price there when i'm importing it here right and plus the demand would be there more in nepal so that's why yes. in bulk they must be procuring the thing Yes, 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 yes. That is that is also one of the reason. Hello, great. Okay, next tell me, Bharat. Uh, see, you have, you are one of the very few who have done Everest from both north side, south side. So there are a lot of people who have this doubt that uh, what are the challenges one faces once you're going from the north side, or what are the challenges one faces anybody faces once they're going from the south side. So south side, I still know. Compare the, both of them. How how what kind of challenges are yeah. different from the north side sure. to the south side? sure sir and before before that like i just want to uh, i mean give a small correction yeah. to you sir and south said i came till the last camp i mean lots say i mean generally i climb lots say okay when i climb lots say i mean because like the two times i went to everest like i'm 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 it from north said only okay okay i mean uh, i yeah. mean when i climb lots say generally like uh, uh, lots say and everest uh, till the last camp the fourth camp will share the same camp till the last so from there it i mean in that way like i know everest Uh, south said better so i came till last camp only i didn't uh, made the summit from south tell me the challenges what you face in the yes. north side yeah so when when we compare uh, uh, everest expedition like uh, i mean if i mean if someone wants me to choose like uh, whether north or south i choose south side when compared to north okay north is like uh generally uh, people will think like south will take around like uh, 8 to 10 days to reach the base camp okay so it is a long walk and for north we can drive to the base camp okay okay so 
and north the problem with the north is like heavy windy we even in the base camp we can't come out of the tent and we can roam or we can speak to someone like it's not like that it's heavy every time it will like it will be windy it will be like i mean complete complete expedition will be like irritating kind of thing when compared to the south south oh. is like very pleasant very pleasant like you know lot of people like you know will spend it will be like a home i mean we saw like you know every every time we used to come to you like you know we had to, we, we met lot of friends we made lot of friends in this i mean in the south uh, when we go to the north uh, we don't come out, come out of the tent only like i mean way to make friends new friends and all so <laughs> windy yeah it's okay, completely yeah. windy completely windy like all the time wind 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 it's like boring north is completely boring south and uh, all like big, 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 big. yeah yeah tell me uh, yeah. right so, now let's say last year like, we went so there was a lot of people who were climbing from the south side do we have these in, these many number of people from the north side as well no sir like for every uh, every five people four people will climb from the south one will climb from the north sir. so it is the ratio is like that oh that's a huge difference yeah, yeah it's a huge difference if it, it will be empty like even when i saw like when i'm climbing uh, uh, everest uh, when i'm when i'm in the north call i when, when when we see like you know uh, even south will will go with lot of people together okay and not like right. you know even in in some times even with your eye vision you can't see people front or back <laughs> okay so it is, it's it's, it's it's empty like you know it's it's irritating kind of uh, climate so no one will prefer right. north uh, and when come i mean uh, climb wise like uh, i can say north is uh, i mean we can't say like this is easy or like that more, i mean we can't compare these things sir but you know uh, north is bit very long route okay till the okay. base camp we can we can drive i mean even vehicle comes to our tent okay right. so from base camp it's a, it's a very long route in that irritating climate and again it's a very very long route when compared to the south okay bharat now another important question you know we find lot of people dying on everest once we were there last year also there were about 11 people who died in that area 18 in that general area so what do you think a person can do to minimize those risk of getting a casualty over there because it is very very disheartening i mean seeing people dying bodies Yes, being sir. evacuated in helicopters and all so what do you think you've been a trek leader for such a long time you've been guiding so many people what do you think are the reasons that uh, to avoid these kind of risks i mean life and death people don't go there for i mean dying so what yes, yes, yes. your thing is the major, major reason sir one thing simple i i mean just just uh, i mean think of uh, this point uh, so generally what we see in a, you know even in our trainings and all people who are training for everest and and you know whatever you know all these people who are training for everest okay they are training okay. for to reach to reach the top and come back to the base camp okay they they are training for okay. that only okay going to the okay. top i mean okay if what something happens in between okay what if avalanche comes like you know what if we fall into the crevasse like what if uh, i mean i mean last year there's a huge traffic jam okay so because like, if there is a huge huge traffic jam they have to like you know minimize our uh, cylinder uh, points okay so all these right. things like we we are i mean all the people like you know who are coming to the mountains they are not prepared for that okay if everything right. goes perfect okay they'll go summit and they'll come down okay what right. if there is a problem so we are not prepared for that okay even this time there's a traffic jam okay it's not deaths i mean deaths happen okay it's, it's because of traffic jam because they are not prepared if, if okay if there is a traffic jam they, they i mean they don't know how to deal that correct so that is so that's a very important point happen. yeah yeah so that is what uh, so because people are not preparing for that if something happens beyond uh, they are not prepared so correct. that is where this no, that's a, coming that's a very very valid point and i want everybody who is listening to this to this make sure once you are going there you should be properly trained properly means yes. thoroughly trained what happens is that people go there untrained they generally feel they will pay the money to the sherpa and it is his responsibility to take you to the top of the everest you know 90% of the cases if things go normally you will come back say if you will feel proud you have done everest and you over the hero but then it's just that if things turn other side if things turn wrong then you need to be prepared to handle the situation on your own that's why if your training is well if you've been guided well then only you should be able to handle a situation which are tough i mean it, otherwise what will happen is any small change in the plan you pay the price and it's very very disheartening believe you me because last year we have seen lot of people who were learning how to tie a cramp on once they were there on the base camp which is i mean yes. ridiculous if you're not trained better not go there so a lot of 5000 mm-hmm. meter peak 6000 meter peak go there 
so that's a very valid point that training has to be very very ruthless if you're not yes. trained please please don't go there that's that's for sure yes now tell me if somebody is going training for everest what specific he needs to do than any other mountain you have done let's say lotse or manas loop so what is specific for everest which you think should be there in the training which is not very very important in other expeditions so one thing like it's it's not about like you know you have to climb this peak or something even there is no such rules i mean we have to climb this mountain and something like that so what i right. prefer is like whenever who goes for 8000 like you know anyway like 8000 we are going with uh, i mean I, and again without toxin it's a it's a different subject again when we are right. i mean going and no, we are going for the normal i mean what how we did like we, i mean with the supplement oxygen so it's better to at least reach a 7000 i mean 6500 plus where i mean any anyone like you know in any peak like if they climb 6500 meters at least they have to touch the height so these 8000ers at least they it will it will become a I mean, lot of it will create a lot of advantage to them i mean there are many peaks in india like you know in, in a very low budget we can do many peaks in india which are 7000 meters even you did mount uh, nun uh, Kun, kun, ha, so kun yeah, kun, yeah, kun, kun. You have done, like you know. So at least it will, it will create a lot of advantage for them. Okay, they see, like you know, uh, see without toxins and like you know, uh, even kun, like it's, it's not that easy. Okay, I mean right. there is a lot of snow. I mean, on, I mean on the way, like you know, they'll come to know That's all okay. this. Uh, no, they'll become strong. You know, they, they'll see like what exactly. I mean, before, before going to the eight thousand, they'll, they'll feel it here. Yeah, absolutely. And all these things give a lot of confidence. You know. once you are yes. going on everest and you know you have done a peak which has been extremely challenging on you and without oxygen if you have done i mean obviously somebody who is doing a 7000 meter would generally do with without oxygen it's only in the emergency yes. carry oxygen so the way you pointed out earlier that if you have done a 7000 meter without oxygen then it means you will be able to handle everest or any yes. other 8000 with oxygen yes yes right so That's that good. that is the point tell me technically how is Uh, other 8000 different from uh, everest as far as only the technical aspects are concerned so uh, yeah uh, generally like people say like you know um... yeah when i'll compare like you know lotse and everest i told you sir Correct, like, yeah. you know, when 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 we say technical pa- technical part i mean when we say kanchenjunga it's uh, kanchenjunga is um, it's it, it's more tougher uh, than everest or lotse whatever it is like you know True. when we say te- technical part okay i mean uh, obviously there will be more steep okay so and with that right. the ma- the major part by what i observed with these peaks and all you know like you know most of the time we we walk on the rock i mean we think like you know even i thought like when people are saying i mean walking on the rock okay that's fine uh, it's not a problem yeah. i mean when when exactly. we are walking we, with that load we are walking high, i mean wearing a crampon and walking on the rock you know knees and all like in some i mean at, at the middle at sometimes without knowing i mean uh, we are just falling down i mean we just falling down i mean there is no yeah, power yeah. in the in the leg okay <laughs> absolutely so it was like the it, it it's a horrible situation that is what uh, creates okay and there are a few peaks like you know annapurna uh, right. lotse and kanchenjunga the problem is the same with the rock okay and coming okay. to annapurna and annapurna and mainly shishapangma uh, these peaks are like avalanche prone areas mainly annapurna annapurna oh. and dawlagiri okay there is a complete okay. avalanche I and mean, we can't i mean uh, uh, i mean uh, when uh, I mean, there are fourteen eight thousand years. Annapurna is the peak which is less climbed. Less, right. I mean, less climbed means less people reach the summit. Like around like two forty or two forty two is the count till date. Okay, it okay. started in nineteen fifty four and till now it's only two forty. Where where Everest is like eight thousand nine thousand people are there. So right. Annapurna, it's not like uh, it, it, we. I mean, uh, see, um, we can't say it's difficult. It's like in a complete avalanche prone area. So when okay. when we when we I mean for Annapurna it's like you know uh, Annapurna and mainly the Olagiri when we go from Camp One to Camp Two it's like you know after reaching Camp Two like I mean I I mean I heard that like people will think like okay today we are alive so <laughs> the situation is the okay. situation will be like that mainly on Annapurna yeah yeah so complete avalanche prone areas so from mountain to okay. mountain it, there are like different different challenges and again K two I mean uh, old second highest peak you know uh, like many people will return from bot- there is a and after seven thousand five hundred meters there is a place called bottleneck like it okay. will be like uh, yeah, I mean bottleneck kind of uh, uh, thing I mean many people yes. I, I mean I heard like yeah uh, I heard like many people return from there like you know I mean oh. I mean after after reaching seven thousand five hundred generally people will lose energy and after losing that okay. energy like you know crossing that point is very difficult so for a mountain to mountain okay. a different challenge challenge is very correct so bharat i think we are running short of time we are already at 745 we'll take questions from the people 
and if time permits then we'll have more questions which i have with me prepared okay so okay. first question is from uh, ratuli sir so ratuli sir wants to know that uh, you said during your uh, talk that once people are coming down that time you have more casualties you know as we say also yes. that one third of the casualties on everest or 8000 meter peak are while coming down so why is it so please elaborate on that okay right see um uh one thing i told you sir like any mountain not i mean not about like 8000 or whatever it is like any mountain it's a successful summit is not like reaching the summit when you reach the base camp yeah then it is a successful summit so generally what we think is like you know all the people like uh, when when they are going uh, to the mainly to the summit uh, so their position mainly i observed this like you know uh, with the people like coming from india like pakistan sri lanka okay okay there is one point sir like i'll tell you because like no one till now like no one discussed about this point okay, okay. i mean uh, uh, i i told you like it's not uh, going to the summit it's coming to the back, back i mean back to the okay. base camp and there is there is one more point uh, why people like you know even in that worst situations even they are exhausted a lot uh, why they are going to the summit there is a one more point here you know we struggle here mainly countries like this okay asian countries like india like all these things i mean pakistan sri lanka so we struggle a lot uh, to raise the funds it's not that easy in a country like you know uh, countries like india and all like it's not that easy to raise like uh, 25 30 lakhs okay right so uh, what i heard is like may, i mean uh, people like why they take risk is uh, risk means like you know i mean they have spent lot of time on raising the funds and all like you know and again there will be lot right. of pressure from the sponsors like it's not like you know western countries they are okay not this time like we'll go next time it's not like that our mentality is not like that, that is where the problem is coming people are like you know even though they are exhausted a lot like you know for the sponsors like you know like they told many people and all like they are climbing you know all keeping right. in mind they are going to the summit okay Oh. and you know why i mean while coming back you know they are completely exhausted you know when people are dying with exhaustion is like you know mind goes completely absent it's not like pain they are not dying with pain or something like that okay they are completely right. going to exhaustion because of that exhaustion like you know the, the i mean the mind it's there is there is no control to the mind and body okay right. so at that at that height when the mind goes into absence okay i mean the brain there is no control like how to breathe Okay. True. So there is no oxygen in the cylinder. It was done. It was. I mean, uh, okay. So they are not po- in a position to come to, to come down. Okay. And the brain is not in control. Okay. Because of that, like you know, the brain won't understand. Like uh, now, in, I mean, because if if we are like you know, uh, if we are in a good position, at at that time it will understand like how much to breathe. Now I have to breathe. Okay. So if you are not in a control, like brain don't understand. So you have to breathe and all. Absolutely. so that is where so, the problem comes that is the mainly exa- so, exhaustion okay why ex- why exhaustion so, is why people are going to that extent that i i told you example like spending lot of money all these things you know they'll be you know at that time they'll be keeping all this all these things will rotate in exactly. the this keeps, so what happens uh, i'll also just add on to it uh, for the benefit of raturi sir and others what happens is that till the time you reach the top your target is that you have to reach the top you know the yes. moment you reach there you will let your guard down thinking that okay now we have achieved what i wanted to achieve and then you forget that you have to come down as well which is again lot of uh, lot of energy gets consumed and the moment you start coming down you realize you know uh, since then you're going up your energy is there so every step you take the energy keeps going down 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 in fact i also had a very tough time vipin and bharat are there today in the forum they they have seen my condition once i was coming back and these guys were going up so then that's not hidden so i had also very tough time just because of the same thing that once you coming down uh, my oxygen cylinder would, so similar things do happen now there is another question by a friend bawa he wants to know that you know what kind of training and exercise you need to do if you want to aspire to be a mountaineer or you want to do any any expedition in future like you have been doing for some time what should you advise to the people what kind of training they should regime we should they should be following yeah so one more i uh, i'll I'll, tell, i'll explain you like you know a few points here coming to the okay. training part like you know generally like you know mm, yeah uh, so I, i mean a basic training is required i mean i don't say like people to uh, go to the gym like you know lift heavy weights and all okay so okay. i mean once like you know one like who is coming to mountain they mainly focus on the cardio 
that's very important cardio is like you know they have to carry like you know in a they I mean they can have a very good backpack okay they can they can keep okay. some like you know I mean, and many people you know i mean i saw many people they are keeping some dumbbells in the bag and uh, stones in the bag and they are walking it's yeah. not like that it's better to keep a salt packet you know mm, salt salt packet okay got it okay so these will i mean no this will don't damage our back okay so like oh. you know, um even even i mean there's a treadmill or like you know if, if there is a ground nearby like you know it, it is very helpful okay right. so c- carrying a weight okay walking okay if if they have a like you know a treadmill they can make it an inclined position and walk up and in steps in a apartment like da- daily like you know like uh, 10 floors 10 times all these things right. you no know, mainly mainly you no know, this will increase our like you know shoulder capacity and thighs which are very important right. and uh, and one more and after this one more important point sir any i mean when anyone is anyone like you know coming to mountain running though they are very fit on land okay i am mean, at the sea level i mean yeah. uh, i mean I, i mean we have seen like many people who are very very strong uh, and are very good athletes and all these things and again mountain is completely a different subject so for that right. they have to go they have to go check their body at the higher levels okay right. they have to go to 4000 meter 5000 meter and there are many people who return back from the base camp because of like you know digestion, digestion problem and all so body right. won't get ad- won't get adjusted though they are very strong at the base and uh, and mountain is completely different subject so they have to check their okay. body at the high, higher altitudes great so there is another question this is by a friend uh, sanil brijesh nandel so he wants to ask that you know there there lot of news that there is a traffic rush once you are climbing everest load so can that be controlled what is is there any regulatory mechanism to control that why does it happen sir i mean every time like uh, you know this time no no i mean uh, traffic is common every time okay i mean even for, okay. i mean traffic is there only for everest uh, from the south side Th- there is okay. no traffic for any other mountain no. okay all the right. mountains are free <laughs> we can't even i told you right, like we can't even uh, i mean see the vision of uh, people exactly. in front and back there are a lot of mountains only problem with one peak and and i mean i mean the traffic it's it's a uh, little common every time i mean uh, at the south side this time okay. uh, the sum, the summit window is for only very less days i mean i think like four days or something like that every time it will right. come like it will it will open for eight to nine days okay this time it's it's very short that is one problem that is a major problem this time and coming to right. the uh, measurements what i mean if if something happen i mean there is a huge traffic there i mean uh, everyone like after this incident like you know everyone are shouting on nepal government like you know it's it's about your greediness like you know you have given like lot of permits it this is not good that because again the you know nepal is like you know their main income source is mainly i mean i mean this mountains and all if they keep okay. rules and regulations again it will, i mean it's it's a like livelihood i mean they are eating because of this uh, i mean uh, tourism only because of mainly because of the mountains so every time after the after the things happen like people people will shout on them like why you are doing that they'll keep some rules but no they won't follow at all like i'm seeing from exactly. many 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 years like, because they can't they can't okay. they can't make it like uh, mandatory because like they are living on okay. it. it's their livelihood so not possible okay tell me the next thing is that you know Uh, is there any criteria from uh, the indian government or for the nepalese government to allow a person to climb everest i mean there are permits which you get but then is there any criteria on which you yeah. get a permit yeah uh when we, i mean there is no uh, involvement from the indian government because like uh, i mean completely everest is related to china and uh, nepal okay okay so uh, okay so when we come to the uh, uh this uh, uh rules uh, like what nepal i mean uh, i mean even recently i mean after this traffic jam incident like people died and all like uh, they kept few rules uh, like uh, everyone okay. i mean everyone who is coming uh, for the everest uh, they have to do a i mean compulsory they have to complete a course a basic course in any of the reputed institute recognized and reputed institute and uh, they hey. have to i mean or, or it's it, it is or not end or uh okay. they have to do at least a 6500 meter okay they said like we are yeah 6500 meters okay. okay so they have to touch 6500 meters like they said like this we are, i mean i mean till uh, october they said like we are strictly following this like uh, uh, everyone has to submit this with their health certificate and all like but again like uh, okay. season come season came like they are not following it so many took uh, this time even this time many took uh, uh, permits like without uh, i mean uh, this 6500 meters uh, nothing like right. they are not following it 
there are rules there i mean there right. are many rules but they are not following it not being followed so what you want to say is that ideally everybody should be well trained and should have done the peak but then officially there is no uh, criteria which is said that based on that only they will be giving uh, a permit right yes yes right okay so uh, next question is that uh, you know how do you generate funds to climb you know uh, not everybody is so rich to manage funds on their own so that's a long long process and i mean very challenging as far as generating funds from different people or concerned companies and all so what do you suggest if somebody wants to climb then how should he manage his plan to climb the everest how i mean from where should he generate funds so the straight answer is like i'm 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 the wrong person to answer this because like i took my <laughs> years to climb to climb everest true <laughs> true yeah no, yeah, but, you know, yeah and and yeah, i have answers like you know i mean i have dealt okay. with a lot of lot of people like you know my part my part is different like i i did lot okay. of odd jobs like i got like you know 20 30% of sponsorship and all like the remaining or not like i oh. earned like i went it's it's like now it's a company like i'm earning with my clients and all i'm i'm doing my 8000 it's a different case and uh, right. people like uh, and there are uh, Mm, there are few states like uh, which are uh, uh, supported by the governments. Like at least they are paying them like uh, half of the payment, like you know, fifteen lakhs or ten lakhs. Okay, and there are only few states. Okay. And even few states, you know, why they are paying? If they, if there is any reason behind that, like you know, you are the first person from that state. Like you know, there is more advantage okay. for the woman. Something should be different. It's not like uh, many climbed. You are also coming and climbing. No, it's not. Uh, it won't. Uh, no, create an advantage. I mean, it's an advantage for that. Like, you know. So okay. it is like that. It, it is one case. You know, when coming to the sponsors, like sponsorship is like you know the first question sponsor is like a sponsor. They ask like what for what what is for him like what is what is for the sponsor. Exactly. What are they about? benefiting? Right. What are their benefits and all? You know, there are like big oh. multinational companies. Now, I mean, now nowadays, like we are seeing, like a lot of multinational companies, like they are coming forward to support. They are you not know, spending their CSR funds on the on, on the people like who who wants to climb Expedition. all this. Uh, yeah, and again, like okay. you know, there is one there is one thing like you should be a good speaker. Okay. okay. If you if you are if you are supported by the company and again after coming back you have to share you know they'll I mean if if a big multinational company is there like you know, if they are sponsoring you they'll be having like lot of branches around India. So you have to go there, like you know, you have to, I mean, you have to speak, you have to motivate their employees. That is what they are getting. That is what the advantage they are getting from you. So you have to be right. generally, finally, you have to be a good speaker, sir. Okay, so you need to for generating funds, you need to convince those people, you know, the companies and other multinationals that you are. This is what they are going to benefit if you climb, and then only you'll be able to yes. handle that. Yes. Sir. Right. So we have just three minutes to go. I'll also remind the viewers that. You know, after this, we have another speaker uh, next week. He's also done Everest. He's also done Brazil 135. He's Ricky from US. So he's going to call in. So any questions you have, you can always supplement through his experiences. You know, everybody has different set of experiences. We have about five or people here in the forum today of the Everest. So we have a lot of people. We keep inviting them based on the interest generated by the audience. But one question I want to ask Bharat again is that you know. Uh, there are two things which mountaineers generally aspire for after Everest. I mean, there is one set of people who they want to go for seven summits, and there are mm, set of yes. people they want to go for uh, eight thousand meter peaks, which is very very rare. You know, uh, mm. I mean, only in wildest of dreams somebody would plan to do all the fourteen eight thousand meter peaks which are there in the world. So, what is your take, and what is uh, next for you? I mean, what are your challenges which you're going to face in future? Uh, yes, sir. Like you know. Uh... And again, it like it depends from person to person. And from coming to from, I mean, coming to my point, like you know, I'm, right. I'm, I'm doing both. Okay, I mean, I just want to do like you know, I mean, seven thousand because like every time like I I, I climb like in seven thousand, I'm sorry, in seven summits like when we take like Akankagua, like Elbrus, like Kilimanjaro, I'm, I'll be climbing like a number of times because like this is our job, you know. I mean. Right. Now we have a company like you know we'll be taking people to there. Okay, so it is it is it is okay. it is a one track. It is one track and coming to uh, eight thousanders, and right. here we have fourteen fourteen eight thousanders. Okay, and again here we have a problem. So in this fourteen eight thousanders, Indians are allowed to climb only nine eight thousanders because the other five are in POK, oh. which is like POK occupied Kashmir. If they are right. in Pakistan, we can climb. Okay, and they are not in Pakistan. They are in POK, POK occupied Kashmir. It's it's a disputed oh. land. Okay. okay, that is where the problem is. There is some bureauc bureaucratic problem. So we are not oh, allowed. Okay. So we are okay. allowed for only uh, nine eight thousanders. So I am in my journey. Okay. I completed three, 
and this time like i have to go to kanchenjunga and because of this corona thing uh, pandemic like it was uh, you know stopped it was moved to next year so okay. this is i mean this is the challenge what i took like to complete all the 9800 rows okay bharat so what we have seen in your various social media there is a friend of ours who is also been doing expeditions with you and he is a duty so how do you train him what are the challenges are there because there is a person is want to wants to ask the same thing that what kind of challenges and how do you train a person who is an amputee to climb the expeditions yeah uh, actually sir like you know uh, yeah shaker shaker is there like you know even in the i mean now in the in, in this like in this i mean uh, in this chat we okay, have nice. one more uh, one more person chitasen he was he, i mean even he is i mean he is from uh, like chitisgarh okay. okay so these people you know what i observed like, in these people right you know they are mentally heavy heavy heavily strong hmm. okay uh yeah so they have their like uh, uh, limb they i mean they, they have like specially made limb okay so i mean they are okay. i mean physically and all they are prepared okay but what i observe when when comparing to other people like normal people and these people the, the, i mean though they are you know physically like lesser than them and these people are like you know mentally they are very strong they are not i mean they are not right. in a position to to give up that uh, you know when they are taking up a challenge they are like you know because they have faced lot of you know things like you know mm-hmm. uh so without mentally this. they are much more fit yeah. than uh, in normal yes, yes, normal I mean, no, normal people normal normal right. able people so they so that is that, 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 yes, yes that that is the main advantage for them okay nice so bro i think we are running short of time so it's already 9 pm yes thank you so very much for your time and i'm thank sure you. all the people who have listened here have they been much pepped up to do expeditions after listening to you and then apart from this anybody has got any question to bharat after this you can always come back you can share the numbers that is not a problem we have already shared in the chat box as well so you can ask them subsequently we'll be having uh, other speakers also if you want to know more about everest and their experiences you are most welcome to go back and once again thanks for us it's been very very thank enlightening you. and it's always good to interact with you we've been doing it so so very good you know thank you so much everyone thank you sir thank you very much bye